SpaceX is poised to achieve a significant breakthrough with its upcoming Starship HLS life support system testing. Last weekend, a Starship nose cone was spotted outfitted with supposedly life support systems and a door to access a mock-up of the crew interior to develop the crew Starship HLS variant. Now, is this all reliable? Well, there's pretty convincing evidence in the form of an electrical box that says HLS on it neatly. As in, you can see it. You can read it. Here it is. You may be wondering about how the HLS doesn't need heat shields as it will never re-enter Earth's atmosphere. In fact, this nose cone was originally for Ship 22 and now has been repurposed as an HLS interior mock-up. So we should disregard the exterior of the nose cone, including the heat shield tiles and flaps. The intricacies of removing these components are formidable and risk compromising the structural integrity of the nose cone itself. The devices from these snapshots are presumed to be life support systems. Delving into the imagery, the devices captured in snapshots are strongly presumed to encompass the life support system. The configuration can include a duo of air-conditioned power panels and an intriguing solar-powered inverter. The tantalizing possibility that arises given its extended time in the mid-bay is that the nose cone might house a partial crew cabin mock-up, an innovation that wouldn't be out of place in SpaceX's trailblazing endeavors. And with this render by the space engineer, it gives us a good idea of what the nose cone looks like inside currently. While the precise details of the upper and lower areas remain speculative, indications suggest a harmonious blend of functionality and efficiency. Two lower levels in conjunction with ample space for the landing rockets present a logical configuration. After all, SpaceX is moving very quickly. They could have an HLS prototype ready for launch in one and a half to two years. Indeed, this progress is necessary, as Musk has addressed life support and human health in his Starship talks before, albeit only briefly. In one of the presentations, the SpaceX CEO was asked twice about the types of life support systems that Starship would use. He goes on to say that, I don't think it's actually super hard to do that relative to the spacecraft itself. The life support system is pretty straightforward. By that, he means a life support system encompasses all of the things needed for humans to fundamentally survive on Earth. Anything that keeps the crew alive and functioning and keeps the environment safe for them is really the life support system. John Cover, the deputy system manager for the International Space Station's life support system at NASA shared. The most basic necessity, or the barest of necessities, is the atmosphere. Life support systems must supply the right mixture of gases for people to breathe and remove carbon dioxide from the air before it builds up to a dangerous amount. The right temperatures, and atmospheric pressure have to be maintained. Astronauts will need drinking water along with a place for water waste to go. SpaceX already has some experience with life support systems with its crew capsule, Crew Dragon, which is designed to take astronauts to the International Space Station. However, providing life support for a short trip to orbit is much different than one that's needed to keep people alive for weeks and months in deep space. For one thing, both oxygen and water can be supplied in finite containers on a trip to orbit, just enough to get people to their long-term destination. On the International Space Station, though, where people live for months at a time, a regenerative system is in place for things like oxygen and water, meaning they're recycled in a closed-loop system. That means urine and sweat are recycled and turned back into drinking water, while some of the water is split apart into oxygen and hydrogen, a process known as electrolysis, so that people can breathe. Musk did say that life support systems on Starship would be regenerative, but life support systems tend to be heavy and complex, altering how the vehicle would operate. And figuring out how to keep people safe in emergency situations is also key. Once you start talking about putting crew in there, you need to start talking about the hazards and how those hazards unfold, says Cover of turning a cargo ship into a crewed ship. He also notes that the crew can get injured or unalived if something goes wrong. 
so there's quite a bit more work that has to go into place. Musk claims that people will be able to still fly to space on Starship as early as next year, which means figuring out the life support system should be a priority in the months ahead. The technology exists today, so it's possible that they could hit their ambitious timeline. Next up, Amazon just moved Project Kuiper prototypes from Vulcan to Atlas V. The opening salvo in Amazon's 3,236 satellite Project Kuiper venture is switching its ride to space, and Amazon spokesperson confirmed in a statement last week that the first two demonstration satellites for the broadband constellation will launch on a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket as soon as September 26th of 2023, instead of the inaugural Vulcan rocket. The change follows news from ULA that its forthcoming Vulcan rocket won't launch until late 2023 at the earliest. Quite the oxymoron. During a beam signing ceremony amid construction of a Kuiper processing facility at NASA's Kennedy Space Center, Stephen Mateyer, the vice president of Kuiper Production Operations, stated that shifting the launch of the first two satellites was something that Amazon was considering. Amazon had booked nine Atlas V launches prior to purchasing 38 Vulcan flights for the deployment of its Kuiper satellite constellation. In a statement, a spokesperson said the fall Atlas launch is part of the original purchase. According to a filing with the Federal Communications Commission, the prototype satellites will be launched on an Atlas in the 501 configurations, meaning it won't be using any solid rocket boosters and will feature a 5 meter diameter payload fairing. The document states that the pair of prototype Kuiper satellites will be sent into a circular orbit at 500 kilometers at a 30 degree inclination. Amazon had previously said the prototype satellites would help test the Kuiper network and subsystems. Launches of operational satellites and the start of some initial trial services are due to begin in 2024. For a fully loaded Kuiper launch on board an Atlas V rocket, Mateo said a couple dozen satellites fit into an Atlas payload fairing but didn't provide a specific number. The shift from Vulcan to Atlas is not the first time Amazon switched launches for these prototype satellites. Back in November of 2021, Amazon announced that KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2 would launch aboard the ABL Space System RS-1 rocket by the fourth quarter of 2022. Less than a year later, in October of 2022, Amazon announced its plans shifted and those two satellites would instead fly on ULA's Vulcan rocket. Amazon stated at the time that it would hold hold on to two launches with ABL space systems for the future. It's unclear how many satellites ABL's RS-1 rocket can launch at a time. And finally, a cosmic object in the shape of a glowing question mark has photobombed one of the latest images captured by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope, and scientists think they know what it might be. The original near-infrared image released on July 26th depicted a pair of young stars named Herbig Haro 46-47 found 1,470 light years away in the Vela constellation within the Milky Way galaxy, where the stars are still actively forming and closely orbiting each other. The two have been observed and studied by space and ground-based telescopes since the 1950s, but the highly sensitive Webb telescope allowed for the highest resolution and most detailed image yet. It has the capacity to observe the universe with longer wavelengths of light than any other space telescope. The Webb telescope illuminates information about the origins of our universe, but the appearance of this mysterious object in the background of this image leaves more questions than answers. The cosmic question mark hasn't been closely observed or studied, so scientists aren't exactly sure about the object's origins and makeup. But they do have a few ideas based on its shape and location. The Webb telescope usually allows you to see six or eight stellar prongs if you look closely, said Matt Kaplan, assistant professor of physics at Illinois State University. It tells you immediately that it's not a star, he said, of the question mark shaped phenomenon. Instead, it could be a merger of two galaxies that at probably billions of light years away are much farther away than Herbig Haro 46-47, said Chris 
Christopher Britt, education and outreach scientist in the Office of Public Outreach at the Space Telescope Science Institute, which manages the Webb Telescope's science operations. There are many, many galaxies outside of our own Milky Way, Britt said. This looks like the kind of thing that you get fairly frequently as galaxies grow and evolve over cosmic time, which is that they sometimes collide with their near neighbors. And when that happens, they can get distorted into all kinds of different shapes, including a question mark, apparently. Well, that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.